Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Curl Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, I'm going to try and bring back Alton Kerman, but also set up our first base on the moon to fulfill the contract here, build a new surface outpost on the moon, which requires an outpost that has an antenna, docking port, and can generate power. I actually forgot the docking port. Um, <laughs> I just remembered the docking port. Okay, so... Hmm. Anyway, uh, but the, here, this is the outpost. Technically, the outpost uh, needs five Kerbals, and the Hitchhiker storage container only contains four. So, it, uh, the outpost actually includes the pod up there, which does not include Jeb. But that pod, this actually is what Alton is going to take to get home. So, it's a little bit complicated, but uh, that was after landing and fulfilling this contract. Uh, that top portion will separate and head home. Sort of like an escape capsule. But I forgot a docking port, and I have no idea why a surface outpost needs a docking port, so that that might have contributed to my confusion. And I don't know if I have a docking port, now that I look at it. I've been busily building this thing without uh, any awareness of that thing that I lack. Now I did add a, a station building and base building contract pack recommended by Mitko and so that is in but this contract does not come from that pack this came from before. It doesn't look like I have docking ports so I don't know how this expected me to fulfill this contract. Let's take a look at the tech tree but I don't think I have spare I should plant a flag on the moon at least uh, we can do that with Alton right now. Maybe that'll get some science to unlock docking ports. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, let me talk over this rocket. I mean, all we have to do is slap a small junior docking port to this eventually. Uh, so this module has the fuel here, and it has thud engines here. They're, they're pretty overpowered for landing on the moon, but that's what this fuel tank is supposed to do. It gives 1,275 meters per second to land at a specific location at the moon. Oh, sorry, uh, th this one is 1,113. Uh, the 1,275 is for the upper capsule. Uh, but you see here, this this is just a tank. Uh, there's a decoupler here and decoupler here. And this tank feeds into the FUDs as well. And this is actually for the transfer to the moon. So instead of having another stage with another engine, we just uh, have a tank and feed the fuel up to the FUD engines. And then we have a skipper stage here. Uh, which on its own would not have enough thrust to weight ratio, but it has SRBs. These are SRBs actually, I just painted them. Um, 346 kilonewtons, these are procedural SRBs, and they last for a minute and a half to get us off the ground. And that's the basic idea. Uh, so they get us off the ground, and then the skipper makes most of the way to orbit. This tank uh, feeding the thud engines will complete orbit, transfer us to the moon. This tank lands, uh, and this tank will also get us into orbit around the moon. And then this tank is for landing, and then that to get out and home. And we've got supplies, as you can see. And I'm using these new uh, landing stabilizers from the USI pack. So that's interesting. But we don't have docking ports. So let me take a quick look at the tech tree to see what's going on with that. Okay, it looks like uh, it looks like it'll take. 90 science to unlock the Clampatron docking port junior and we've got 38.7 let me see what Alton can do he doesn't have an antenna though so he can't transmit data back but let's just plant that flag and fill that contract maybe that comes with some science okay here we are again in this precarious position with Alton yeah that's that's quite a Kerbin over there but yeah yeah trying to get him to plant a flag well, we have to do it on CVA. Why don't you just plop down? Really, all this is uh, missing is the engine. The whoa, he's he's chattering. What? What? No, uh, I don't know what's going on there. Hmm, that is a bug too. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the drill yet. That has to be unlocked. Otherwise, we could just send an engine and have uh, engineer attach it. And that's the inventory. Anyway, plant a flag. God, he's just... I don't know what's going on there. 
Okay, I still have the USI flag. Okay, um, site name Alton on the moon. I didn't expect to be doing this right after being rescued. Well, you haven't really been rescued yet. Well, I guess he has to do an EVA report. Uh, yeah, as if he can transmit the data. E yeah, okay, just keep it. Okay, hmm. I have to get him back up there. Board. Okay, he's back in. The plan of flag contract has been fulfilled. No science, just funds. Oh well. Um, do we have another craft around the moon? Yeah, I mean we've got the scanner probe. Do is there any science that it could uh, transmit from its scans? Okay, so it's been scanning for a while. Analyze data. We can transmit this low resolution altimetry scan. Okay and nothing to do with the carbonite scan that's been done okay log magnetometer data that's been done so that's or scan how about uh, visual observations ah moon's poles oh very good transmits the observation of the moon's poles and maybe there's something else we can do here do we have enough yet no one more uh, visual observation in another biome would be would be ideal. Uh, it's losing power. Um, Highlands transmit data. Oh, getting low on the electric charge here. Barely got it sent off. Okay, now we have ninety. Back to space center. Okay, so miniaturization with the docking port junior unlocked. Okay, where would I put a docking port junior out of all places? Out of all things. Docking. There we go. Um, well. I don't really, uh, I don't envision using a sky crane with this thing if you were thinking that sort of idea. Okay. Well, that, that's all the things. I guess we can add some inventory um, no I guess we can't that's seat inventory that'll be dependent on a Kerbal being in there we're currently controlled by the probe core in here by the way so that's why we get to go without Jeb or any crew I'm hoping the boosters will separate fine without any separatrons and that they will be recovered using those parachutes uh, according to stage recovery According to stage recovery, it's 4 meters per second for the boosters with those parachutes, and 3.1 with the parachutes on the pod. Ablator is there. Throttle up. SAS is on. And launch. And over to Smart ASS. Now with the flat surface on top of the hitchhiker's storage can, this is not the most aerodynamically friendly thing I've ever designed. But I didn't want to put a heavy fairing on it. Okay, approaching the bit where we find about the boosters. Here we go. Okay, the boosters are clear. We'll find out whether they are recoverable. That's a separate issue. They don't seem to be smashing into each other. That is a plus. We do not plan to uh, recover the skipper stage. I do want to let it re-enter though. So even if we have enough fuel to complete orbit with it, I intend to finish orbit with the thuds. Okay, everything looking good. 
As far as supplies are concerned, well, uh, this only show this doesn't show what's on here. Just uh, what is being consumed by the people currently consuming supplies. Alton has four days. Okay, we have used all the fuel from the skipper stage, and it will re-enter as planned. Let me throw all down. Let me separate. Okay. And let's just check out the thuds. Okay, but we can just coast to Apoapsis before using them. And so this is the rest of the vehicle. Okay, uh, 112 by 98. Let me plot for the moon. Okay, here we go. On to the moon. Interesting fact I noticed, by the way. When I press escape to go to the pause menu, my GPU seems to do a lot of extra work and makes a lot of extra noise. When I go out of the pause menu, it cools down again. I, I, I don't understand it. Uh, I am monitoring uh, temperatures, and uh, the temperatures are fine normally, and the fan is quiet. Then I go to the pause menu, and then the fan revs up. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. The mysteries of computing. It is summer, so obviously the fans do extra work, and I am monitoring that situation. Okay, that's a fine approach. It doesn't matter which direction we're going in, we're trying to land at the surface location, so we do need some sort of inclination to us, but we can adjust that once we get into the moon's SOI. Let's proceed, check electric charge once we get uh, the nighttime side here. Looks like electric charge is fine, but we could do with an extra tilt to help things out. There, that should do the trick. Okay, so now I would like to correct it. Okay, a 42 degree inclination should be enough, right? Yeah, uh... Our target is at 30 degrees south, so a 30 degree inclination would have been minimal. This should be enough. So we'll try and make sure this tank crashes into the moon. Okay, here we go. Whoa, 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 what happened? It started spinning uncontrollably. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not right. I think uh, maybe the engine gimbal hit the tank and so was obstructed. That can happen. Let's just line up exactly with the retrograde marker and then that should be a problem. Whoa, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, any engine gimbal causes quite a lot of spinning. Okay. Until we lose that tank, I can't gimbal these engines safely. I'm not pointing directly retrograde because I wanted to make sure my periapsis didn't go further down. Uh, with all of the flipping around hijinks, I don't think we'll have enough to bring this stage down. Well, we could keep the tank on while we start our descent burn. And we're actually continuing to burn because we're starting to use this fuel now. Okay, that's good enough. Right. Um, looks like we'll have to wait a while, actually, to get to him. He's... well, maybe we can just correct it. Yeah. We could... Once we get around here... Nah. We, we can correct it close to it. Though we'll be trying to land there at night. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll nix that. We'll wait until it's on the other side and in daylight. I hope that doesn't take too much time, though. Alton does have limited supplies. And yeah, it's gonna take too much time. 
There's a huge slope there, though. I should have put lights on this thing. It's quite costly. How much Delta V do we have? Well, it'll be tight. Okay, that's a crash course for the tank, so let's dump the tank so we're not carrying that along. Okay, that's in line with our target. Let's put landing gear down. Oops. Okay, these these guys don't respond to landing gear. Okay, extend stabilizers. I wonder if they're even considered proper landing gear. I don't know. Maybe they're just supposed to be supplementary stabilizers, in which case I'm misusing them. Well, misusing equipment is partly what Gerbil is all about. We don't want to land at the slope where Alton is, so we want to be a little bit away from that. We'll just have him move. We've got a lot of thrust to work with. So let's limit to, say, 32% for now. Well, it's probably pretty dark for you, but I can see the ground right now. I can turn on ambient light adjustment a bit. Or planet shine, I mean. Here it's planet shine. Seems like this is all a very slopey area. Maybe past it over here would be good. So yeah, I'm trying to land over here somewhere. It'll be a little bit of a trip, but not too far for Alton. The suicide burn countdown is probably wrong. Probably it's assuming that I'm using 100% of the throttle range on the thuds rather than limiting it to 32%. Okay, you were pretty far away from Alton. Three and a half kilometers, it says. But I do think I like the terrain here a little bit better. can't really see it very well though. Okay... 25 meters per second left of Delta V. Oh, I think we've landed. Uh, we're skidding though. Lots of skidding. Lots of skidding. But it's not much of a... well, okay, there's some slope, but not much of a slope. Okay, but Alton is 3.2 kilometers away, so it's a long road trip for him. Let's make sure we're doing it in daylight instead of doing it right now. Um, build new surface outpost on the moon is complete. They have accepted this as the surface outpost. Um, this was the skipper stage that we expected would blow up. But as far as the boosters are concerned, I think uh, we recovered them. Stage value 4,725. Total refunds 4,328 or so. Okay. So uh, let me go to tracking station. Time warp and... Well, you know, uh, Alton doesn't have that much by way of supplies. I'll go to tracking station and switch to him. I mean, he's got three days. There's much more over here. Yeah, I think I should try and move him over. Okay, here we go. Can Alton get all the way over to a uh, craft that's... Oh, over there. Alton 2. Alright, EVA. Alright, jetpack. EVA propellant 5 units. Let's go. Without jetpack fuel, he won't be able to climb into the pod, even if he could walk the rest of the way. He needs some fuel left over 
Otherwise, you can't get inside. Okay, render range. Wow, long pause for render range. Okay, approaching one kilometer now. One kilometer. I'm probably pretty high up. Let's see if Alton can touch the ground without any issues. Like tumbling all over the place. Okay, yeah. He managed to set himself down safely. Now, to get to the right side of the pond. So there isn't a ladder going all the way up, just part ways up. Though that supply container is going to get in his way, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Well, I guess we'll just have to use the jetpack to go up. Grab. Board. Okay, well, he's in. Okay, um... I didn't... I don't think I took his EVA report, did I? Let me just get a crew report. Uh, we can actually transmit that right now. We'll, we'll get a, this is our base, so we're going to be doing EVA reports over here anyway. I'm in a hurry to try and get him back to space and back home. So let's see if all of that goes well. We want it to separate and ignite at the same time. We want uh, orbital velocity to be fine. Okay, um, I want to shut down these engines, which are pretty much out of fuel anyway. And, you know, have them stage some other time. Okay, I think that's all set. He's got supplies in there, inside the, the storage containers. I mean, inside the service module. Okay, throttling up, and let's go. Okay, I think that was just a decoupler, so it's fine. Whoop. By the way, we also have a contract to drill for ore on the moon, but we, we don't have anything to drill for ore with. So, that's another thing. I don't know if the new contract pack... Uh, replaces stuff like that which you know obviously we can't do just yet maybe the existing contracts put stuff uh, assume that stuff would be in a different node than it is don't know okay we are in orbit pretty good orbit too let's plot forward return Okay, folks, we are going to exit out, and then we'll have to adjust our periapsis because of our inclined orbit around the moon. We'll have to wait till we get out into Kerbin SOI in order to bring our periapsis down. Here we go. Actually, we're passing over the site right now. We went made an entire orbit. It took us so long to get into orbit, we couldn't do this burn straight away. But yeah, there we go. Uh, that's all the stuff right there. 25 seems a little bit harsh. Let's go 26. Okay, 27. Alright. Let's head over there. We will use the remaining fuel to slow down a bit as much as we can. And then we'll dump the service module. Well, not the real... Actually, just the tank. Not the service module itself, which contains supplies and the probe core. Okay, let's get stuff ready. Retrograde. Okay, there we go. We have finished all the fuel. We will jettison that module. We will jettison that module. And it's just heat shield, service bay, capsule, and... Hopefully it'll be alright. 
Okay, okay, here we go. We are in the atmosphere. Still going very fast. And there is some heating on the on the heat shield. That's not unexpected. We are now at normal Kerbin orbital speeds. Rate of ablation is decreasing. G force is at three. Appears like we will set down over land. And we are through the worst of it. G forces did not go too badly. Just a matter of whether there's going to be any rough terrain, though it looks pretty flat. Might be a little bit deceptive in the dark, though. Though I thought I think those are the mountains there, so not bad. Waiting for good signals on the parachutes. Really, the parachutes. Well, actually, they're the same kind of parachutes. They're all main chutes. Okay, looks good. I'll wait for uh, 260 meters per second to deploy the chutes, just for safety's sake. I have been conditioned by previous versions of real chutes as well as the stock game to not be hasty with the parachutes. Well, they should be safe now. Reason too high. Well, okay. One shoot deployed. Uh, I guess I didn't. Let me just arm shoots then. Arm shoot. Okay, well, now everything worked out. Well, I guess I had misconfigured the shoot somehow. Wouldn't be the first time. Okay, full parachute deployment. And that brings us down to 3.9 meters per second, which is excellent. And there we have it. Um, I think there's just grasslands. Let me. I'll have Alton pop out and just uh, take a quick check of the biome. EV report. Oh, Highlands. Um, I, I, I don't have a ladder for him to climb back up, so I'll, I'll keep this and board. Uh, maybe we can have a crew report, actually. EVA. So, uh, take data. Board. Crew report. Okay, keep data. We transmitted the other crew report. Alright, now recover vessel. Okay, well that was a short, relatively tight mission, uh, but I think I'm going to end it there. We got 37 Science, and we've got uh, the pod back, obviously. We got Alton ready to go as a scientist, and of course we now have 1.8 million funds. So next time we need to do more stuff at that base. We can't extract ore just yet. Um, we could reposition a satellite, but that's just a minor thing. Um, magnetic field environment around the moon, those are specific locations. Well, it's just low and high orbit, though. That could be pretty easy to do, but again, I think uh, mainly base building. New orbital station around Minmus sounds interesting, actually. I, I, in fact, I'm going to uh, pick that up right... Well, it says research lab. I hope I have that. Have 2,000 units of ore in your station. Okay, see, they're, they're once again assuming we have technology that we don't have. Um, but it's giving me 17 years, and we've got plenty of contract slots available. So we'll pick that up now in preparation for doing that in the future. Uh, rendezvous two vessels in orbit, in orbit around Kerbin. We can do, we have the docking ports now, but uh, we'll have to have a use for that. So we'll see. Uh, but I want to do base building next time as well, and send the carbonite unit. We need to build a special carbonite unit. I think uh, we should have a, a new orange just like I had in the old colonization series to land the real uh, base modules on the surface. That would be good. 
So I'll look into that for the next episode, all right? So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.